structure and pace of the show. I think we're, we're looking at it as two smaller seasons that I think will overlap with each other, but really look at the winter finale as kind of a halfway point to the season, like 10 episodes in, and then, um, and, and what's great is it allows us a little more time to explore and play out certain relationships and, and characters. And we're having a lot of fun with some of the stuff that we thought would be flowing through quickly, uh, story-wise, so we're kind of letting some of the back half take shape as it goes along. We have a plan for the year. So how many scripts have been written at this point? Six. Okay. You mentioned that you guys are introducing a lot of new characters this season. What, which one is personally your favorite and why do you enjoy it? Um, I mean, I think Tony Chopaz is great because it's great to get another woman on the show with a distinct personality and point of view. I mean, I think that's one of the strongest things about Riverdale. And she is sort of a female junkhead, which is really fun. And it's also just fun to see uh, a sort of smart, opinionated woman from the other from the South. Now, speaking about Tony, there in the comics, she's typically represented as bi. Is she going to be bi on the show? Yes, she will be. Now, what are the challenges of having a bi character on a TV show? Well, we have bi characters. I mean, Levens of Tomorrow, which I also work on with bisexual characters. I, I think it's, it's not so much a challenge, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for different love triangles and love stories. And, you know, certainly it's a uh, The last uh, episode came to the crime, uh, most of the people who still came to the crime. Uh, is sort of like you know, mysteries and sort of come up to be a very good character. Absolutely. I think that there, you know, the, the image that we kind of, the Roberto and I talked about from the very beginning of Riverdale was the opening of Blue Velvet, which is you see like this green, green grass and this white picket fence, and then you see a severed hair. And so it's always about the darkness underneath this sort of suburban fantasy, and I think that we'll continue to explore that as long as the show's on there. Can you guys please say your name for the sake of transcription? Really love. So we were talking a little bit about how this season there'll be 22 episodes. We'll get to tell more stories. Are we going to see more of the pussy? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think even though 22 sounds like a lot of yeah, there's my favorite thing to do. So we definitely have a lot more stories. I mean, we have like such a huge cast, so I feel like it's not all the time because we're coming from all there. But I don't feel like writers always get to explore the new ways that they want to because there's so many people. But hopefully she comes back, you know, we'll get to see a little bit more about what's going on with the girls and like, our relationship to each other. Sometimes we like drama. But they're super sorry. They're like this kind of character. They are. Um, so that, I'm sorry. Um, both of you guys were talking about how important it was to have that you guys are representing a diverse Pussycat Dolls group. Have you guys had any meaningful interactions with fans who are just excited to see you guys playing this iconic group? Yeah, for sure. We have this one guy on Instagram. His name's Peyton. Give him a shout out. And from the beginning, like he has been so supportive. He's like all about rocking his like natural hair. And what did he say to us when he reached out? He's like really sweet. I don't know, but I've had a lot of girls say that they didn't like their hair. Or, <clears throat> sorry, um, I feel like I typically have like, hair that doesn't quite curl. It's just kind of all over the place, as you can see. And I just, it is what it is. And I feel like girls that have hair like that are, are scared to, you know, embrace it. It's God-given hair. Just own it. And that was, a, a, frankly, one of the things we loved about you and your edition. So, we're relatable, we're real. Yeah. yeah. It's not, yeah. And I think there's like so much power in that. I feel like a lot of us, at least for me, I spent so much of my life trying to fit into this box of like, oh, like I have to shake my hair, like maybe can do extensions to kind of conform to what I think they want from me when I go into audition rooms. And I feel like a lot of uh, my experience with Riverdale has been really just finding my own authentic power and just realizing that what I have. It's not actually like enough, but it's amazing to be able to be you know, and it's based like River. We've seen more um, more of the Pussy Cats performance throughout the season. It's still like two or three times the first one. Yeah, more than that. Yeah, they'll, now they're really like sort of the in-house band, so anytime we have an event, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> they're glazed we're going to be there. Yeah. Um, so what do you guys think about the Pussy Cats movie that was made? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think there's a good talk 
photographer was actually on the pilot too. Is that true? Yeah. I'm gonna double check it. Yeah. I loved it. And I'm gonna be honest, it got a lot of flack at first, but I loved it. And I still love it. And if it's on TV, I'm watching it always. I think it's great. I feel like it was... I loved it. And I feel like there were like cheesy moments, but I feel like it was intentionally cheesy, but I feel like people took it as, oh, this is cheesy. But I no, think that was funny. Was, yeah. I, I loved it. I thought it was funny. And I feel stoked that I know Daria Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> so, coming up with the Pussycats, can you tell us a little bit about where your story is going to go? Do you even know what's going on? To be honest, we keep, everything's pretty under wraps, just in case one of us slips up. Sarah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, there'll be, I mean, yeah, there'll be stories for everyone. <laughs> and for all the years to come. <laughs> Is Val going to try to get back to Archie then? I think Archie and Veronica is really the relationship we're exploring with Sarah. I think it, you know, there was chemistry from the pilot on, and uh, so, you know, the, 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 kit, the closet kit in episode one, so that was really a slow part, so we're sure we're excited to really try and uh, get into the Archie uh, sure. Alright, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.